In the aftermath of the COVID-19 crisis, the UN Secretary General reminded us that everything we do must have a strong focus on building more equal, inclusive, and sustainable societies that are more resilient in the face of climate change and many other global challenges that we face. Please welcome a man driven by the principles of earth care, people care, and fair share. Who better speak about the environment, sustainability, to connect soil and soul than a landscape architect, environmental educator, and the Silver, Silver Logie Awarded host of ABC's much-loved Gardening Australia, Costa the Garden Gnome, Costa Georgiadis. Hello everyone, my name is Costa Georgiadis and I'm very excited to be part of this Rotary event, Reflect, Respect and Celebrate. What a wonderful day it is to be a part of this broadcast and I'm coming to you from my part of the country, which is Sydney, Australia. And this specific part of the, the, the landscape here in, in North Bondi is on Gadigal and Bidigal land of the Eora. And I want to acknowledge and recognise Elders past, present and emerging. And recognise that today's theme is about getting environmental. It's about getting connected to our landscapes. The landscapes where we live, but equally. The landscapes that sustain us through the work of these incredible individuals who together create a lot more than the sum of their parts. I'm talking about plants, and in this case, native plants, and the role that they play in telling the story of this landscape. Plants that have eked out a living, that have built up their resilience and their strength, but also their interrelationships as a plant community across different landscapes here in Australia. So to all of you Australian Rotarians, welcome. And I ask you the question, where are you in the landscape? Equally to all of our international uh, Rotarians watching this event today, whereabouts are you? Are you on a ridge? Are you on a slope? Do you face north or south? Are you like me? I'm in a coastal landscape and this coastal landscape is a sand dune. So as a sand dune, that has a certain impact on the ecological community that's here. And when I work with that, then I use the species from here, such as this beautiful Costantra, this native thyme. Oh, I wish I had smell -o vision and you could just get, get into that. Oh, it's so good. But, but th this is what it's about. It's about building biodiversity and building biodiversity in those places where we live. Now, you may have a rooftop garden. You could have a, a small courtyard. You might only have a few pots out the front of your house in a small front yard or a small backyard. Or you could have a nature strip like me. And these nature strips, let's have a look. As that, as that neighbor of mine walks off down the hill, this is a, a corridor. This is a connector. These are the literally the arteries of our communities. And when we start to re-nature them, when we start to rewild them, then we really can reconnect and regenerate our landscapes by understanding them. And in that sense, we give voice to the connections that are here, to the seed bank that's laying latent in the soil, to the subsoil microbes and all of the associations that are there and then of course to above the ground and what happens once these landscapes start, start to live, breathe and share their voice again. I was standing here moments ago and I saw blue banded bees. Now blue banded bees are coming because I have native plants here and I have flowering plants that are bringing the insects and when we bring the insects we'll bring the birds and when I think of birds I think of my friend Millie Formby, who's flying around Australia, raising awareness for BirdLife Australia about our shorebirds. But the shorebirds fly from Siberia across multiple continents. 
So our landscapes are part of the big picture. And when we think like that, when we think more environmental, when we get environmental and we start to take action conceptually, but then with our hands, when we think about it scientifically through groups like the Australian Citizen Science Association and we participate in the big backyard bird count or the native pollinator count and we contribute that information to iNaturalist, which is information for all scientists and all researchers to get hold of and to use and to, to implement as ways to reduce the curve, to bring the curve down on the endangered and threatened species um, list that, that, that seems to be growing every year. We can work on that. We, we can make a difference. And when we tell the story of our country, when we tell the story of our plants like this, and you know, this beautiful strawberry gum, if we start to connect with our First Nations people, they are the scientists who have been observing and, and recording data and passing that data on for generations. And when we connect with that, we give our First Nations people voice. And we can do that through planting native plants and then telling those stories. And that way, that 97% of us can give voice to the 3% and start to share their land management skills, their plant skills, their horticultural skills, their medicinal medicine skills. All of those things come through understanding the plants and the importance of grasses, the importance of ground covers, the importance of canopy, what's going on under the soil. All of these things are our opportunity by taking advantage of land where we are. And in this case, this is my street garden and I'm growing crops out here that I can share. There's chilies, zucchinis, cucumbers, and, and my, my neighbor down the street there, Judy, br brought me up 30 cherry tomatoes or more. She's picking that many a day. And, and then we, we connect with groups like CropSwap and grow it local and connect to the, grow it local seed service to grow local seeds. And then we can think about Citizen Science Australia and BirdLife Australia and then Frog ID by having water, which helps, helps bring our, our dragonflies and all of our water life and, and provide water for our, our marsupials and our birds. All of these little details make a difference when we do it together. And this is just my nature strip but up there, there's an incredible biodiverse section that has, has been planted out densely to provide protection for the local smaller birds, not just the larger birds. But then there's also cones there for the larger birds to come. I've got a large banks here at Street Tree here. We've got the bottle brush, with, which brings different nectar feeding birds. There's landscapes. Oh, there's land in landscapes everywhere. We just need to put our nature goggles on and start to see them. Down in this part of the street, you can see sunflowers and I plant that as a happiness garden um, over, over November through till about April, May. So look, I could take you on a much more extensive tour of the compost and the soil that I've been building, but I'll finish off by saying this, that. We have an opportunity through the smallest amount of gardening to get connected with the environment around us, to take action in a way that we give voice to our landscape. We, we regenerate our landscapes in a way that it brings the wildlife back, it brings the story, it brings the music, it brings the dance, it brings the song, and it brings the language of our landscapes back. It brings our First Nations people with us moving forward together. As they say in uh, Yirrkala in Northeast Arnhem Land, Bala Galili, we walk together. Let's get environmental in 2023. Let's re-nature, let's rewild, and let's take action. I can't wait to see you out there in my travels. Thanks very much, Costa, for giving us so much food for thought.